What is good? We're back. And of course, what would be a week if we didn't tell you what moves to make right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Five of them. Maybe more. I mean, a lot more if you've been following this program for a while. Okay. <laughs> Randy Savage. <laughs> yeah. Cup of coffee in a big city in a big time. Cup of coffee. We got our guy, Austin. What's up, bud? How you doing? Good, man. What's up, fellas? How's it going? Oh, if I was any better, I'd be you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, make sure you follow. Single, childless. Yeah. Not single, not single, but not married. So basically single. <laughs> yeah, childless. It's not cost you any money to cheat. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not uh, my wife cheated on me, I'd be getting paid because she makes more money than I do. So. <laughs> Cheat away, baby. <laughs> there you go, man. Trophy husband, right? That's right. right. That's right. Uh, so make sure you go follow Austin at Austin Abbott FF on the Twitters and everywhere else on social media. That's two B's and two T's. If you're listening on the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, we've been doing this this all year. We'll keep it going. Um, it's It's obviously, you know, things that we're telling you to do right now, but you know, you do whatever you want. It's more ideas. We're just floating things out there, having a good time. Uh, we try to have a little bit more of a conversation here, but man, I'm here for a list, dude. You better have a list. Right. So of right, right off the rip, right off the rip, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick one. I mean, you know, I know you need it. You just gotta, gotta get it right in those veins. No context. What do I need to do right now? Uh, you know, I think David Montgomery right now, he was on the list last week. We didn't get to him. And luckily he came out and, and, had a ridiculous run this week, which, by the way, Jamison Williams, huge factor on springing that run all the way. So that's good news for Jamison Williams because that's the kind of shit Dan Campbell will get fired up about is seeing Jamison Williams get down there and make a block and be excited that he sprung David Montgomery and he made he didn't drop any of his balls. So good for Jamison Williams moving forward. Uh, but David Montgomery, if you are a losing or a middling team right now, I think if you can ring the register for a first, it wouldn't be the worst idea ever. Basically, I think the public hates David Montgomery. Uh, the value is always driven down. That He had a huge play that everyone's talking about. Everyone's seeing him. You look at the box score. He's fucking crushing it. Um, you know, you may get slapped down a little bit by the, the what about J Jameer Gibbs kind of stuff. But I think it's worth going out there right now and, and figuring out what the value is and seeing somehow if you can ring the register for a first for David Montgomery. I'm not saying just give him away. I'm not saying I really don't, I don't really don't want him on my team. But if I'm a good team, I'm not giving David Montgomery away. I think David Montgomery is going to have a role in this team for a long time. Uh, I think he's exactly what they want to do, but I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to try to capitalize on that box score um, and, and selling him to a contender. If you're a middling team, be honest with yourself, or if you're a, you know a team that's already predicted to miss the playoffs, get cash out while you can on David Montgomery while it's you know probably about as high as it could be. The Gibbs having a good week probably kept it from being as high as it could be this week, but I still think there's people who are just just scratching around for a running back right now who are desperate. Um, so I think you could ring the register on that. Any thoughts on that, Austin? Yeah, dude. Shout out to David Montgomery, man. All five seasons in the NFL, he has been in RB2 or better, RB24 or better, man. And he finishes RB4 in his second season ever. He wants to hear that. Every, every year, dude, David Montgomery produces mm -hmm. every single year. Like it might not be the prettiest doesn't matter he's an rb2 at, at worst you know according and to, to add history. to add to that there was two seasons in a row where the final six games yeah he yeah. was rb1 overall so dude, he won yeah. two championships Ooh. if you had him still right hate him still hate dude, him. dude i i still thank him i'm still grateful mm -hmm. i still have to venmo him if you guys have his <laughs> venmo let me know because he got me a ring one year literally because he was balling out like the final six weeks he scored 20 points every single game minimum I love Monty, but to your point, dude, why wouldn't you sell him if you're a bottom tier team? Like, why? Let me, better question. Why haven't you sold him yet? Right. Like, you're so lucky that he had that fat 75 yard touchdown run, which, by the way, was like highlight reel, like phenomenal. Oh, I mean, one great. of the sickest runs ever. Take advantage, get a first while you can, if you can. I sold him uh, two, three weeks ago. Uh, I know I'm, I'm rebuilding. That pick's likely going to be between 10 and 12, right? We're looking at like a late first in 2024, and I'm fired up I got that pick. Is that Superflex so, or 1QB? 
uh, that to one quarterback, but I'm I'm still happy with it, and I feel like you might have an even better sell high window right now than I did two three weeks ago when when, when that deal went down. So take advantage. I'm with you. Like it. So we're gonna. Uh, I want to hit another hot topic before we get out of here. Two two lesser names here who aren't as sexy and fun, but one of them, uh, both of them, are super hot in the streets. One I think a lot more people will care about. Let's talk a little Keaton Mitchell. We're growing a show within a show. Buy, sell, hold. Oh, boy. This is fantasy inception. Keaton Mitchell, fantasy inception, a little biodome. We're going to go to a dome within a dome. Um, inception is way smarter than biodome. Um, I'm biodome's right. way better. <laughs> Inception's strong. Oh, uh, yeah. It's it strong. It is what strong. an idea. Like, But, you know, you get Paul Shore. That, Paul that, Shore to Baldwin. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, son in law, better than biodome. Mm, but, uh, no way. Inception when that when that when that van's just trickling down like every second's like an hour and he's under mm. and, a, and the whole movie, movie the thing's just going super slow until the, until finally that van hits the water and everybody wakes up from all the shit man what a <sighs> shit what a movie so Let's check that out Keaton Mitchell buy sell hold um you know I I think the the third buying for a third has that ship has sailed. Uh, I, I think. see you see you. Um, so what are your thoughts here on, on Keaton Mitchell, Austin? I think he's a great player that you picked up off waivers and you should probably just go sell high, man. How many 179 pound running backs, five foot eight undrafted oh, free agents. We got to wait a six one ninety one. Uh, shout out player profiler, man. Go check out player profile. Um, he never gets things him. wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right now, they're always right. Actually, um, not uh, not crazy about their Twitter account, but that's a whole different <laughs> conversation. <laughs> uh, Wait till anyway. you hear his show. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm I'm with you. But uh, four three seven, like 99, 99th percentile, uh, hit crazy forty time. Right, I saw Lamar talk, and he's like, "Man, I think he's faster than me," and he might be right, but I think if you can. Man, if you could get a mid second, is, is that realistic? Is anybody paying a mid second? Any team that's desperately in win now and just needs a running back? Do you yeah, think that well, there's think, a world that exists? I think you know, like I said, I think the third, the buying for a third window has officially closed. So I mean, that yeah. that, me, that means you're probably moving to two threes, yeah. and I don't know if that's happening. So it's it's like two's got to be, which means you're probably somewhere around a two, three swap at mm -hmm. this point. Maybe it's a hold for one more week. Cause we just saw, you know, we can, we can talk about height or weight on or, three touches or whatever. You know, I mean, 12 total like, touches. The last getting, two weeks. I know that the comparison for everybody is, is, uh, Devon Achan. Hey, Chan, um, yeah, yeah. But Hey, Chan, uh, <laughs> Hey, the Texas A and M fans said that they were pronouncing it A chain the whole time. So yeah, they all like, were. Everybody said A chain, okay, yeah, and it's cool. Were. Okay, it's so fine. don't hit us in the comments. It's fine, um, <laughs> but he he did he did fuck up a lot of geometry on that last one, crushing Dude, angles. I didn't like, think it looked like he was going to be tackled multiple times. <laughs> yeah, and he I was just like, oh, they're for sure going to. Oh wait, they're not going to get those him. angles. They're like, not going to get him. So you know, I think he's going to play leverage himself into a little bit more playing time. Justice Hill is, you know, and I hate this term as mid as fuck. Like, <laughs> and, and you're so millennial, bro. Like Gus Johnson, or uh, you know, the Gus Bus is 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 a good player. I Gus think those Edwards. Gus Edwards, yeah, uh, Gus Edwards is a really good player. Uh, I think Keaton Mitchell and him together could could form a nice duo as, along with Lamar Jackson. I think this is a hold right now, and and wait until you can lock in the two. But I'd send him for the two this week if 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 you can send him out to everybody um, for the two. Yeah, it's yeah. he's just another one of these. Jaleel McLaughlin type players where it's like, holy shit, it's so explosive when you see him touch the ball. You just don't know. Like he's played 18% of the snaps in week nine and 24% of the snaps in week 10. Like he's not out there very much. No. He needs, uh, and he could have had an even bigger day. He had a touchdown pass. The, the linebacker was, you know, just blindly hands up. He got a little distracted there. Uh, but he looks like he's a lot of fun. I For the third, I would have bought. For the second, I guess I would, I would probably <laughs> sell. Um, but looks like a lot of fun right now so um keaton mitchell somebody to uh keep an eye on how about would you would you swap keaton mitchell for for the gus bus i would rather i'd rather gus bus um oh. I, I, Especially, I get the yeah, it depends on your team situation if you need yeah. Gus right now if you're rolling with gus you just ride gus i, I right? trust gus more man um i just i think he's <laughs> think he's the better player is that a hot take is that weird to say i i just i i can't you know it's been 12 touches for this kid in two games which is you know he's been hyper efficient mm -hmm. and he looks 
electric. But twelve at the end of the day, man. Interceptions to add on to that. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Bit. Right, right. Tw- I meant twelve rushing attempts. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And like just you know, it's it's just not enough for me to uh, to buy in, man. Like we've seen a good enough track record from Gus Bus. Yeah. Where I I just think that what we've seen from him in his career is still does outweigh these 12 rushing attempts, right? I guess that's the best way to put it. How do you yeah. feel? I think kind of what what Jason yeah. said there, but at, at at 28, I might I might be all right with swapping out and see if I mm-hmm. catch lightning in a bottle with with Yeah, cuz you're probably Mitchell. not getting it too for Gus Edwards. No, I no. I, I think yeah. I think maybe coming into this week you might have been able to get somebody for a two here just cuz he's he had the two touchdowns two weeks in a row, I believe. Um and was and was putting up some decent points. Would you rather have Demario Douglas or Keaton Mitchell? If you could swap out Mitchell for Douglas, would you? Like you got? I would Keaton rather. Du- I would confidently Douglas? rather rather Douglas. Yes. How about how about Josh Palmer? I would rather Josh Palmer. I think yeah, Josh Palmer's like a solid player. I think he's very yeah. uh, underappreciated. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's do one more here. What if you, what if you could, would you, would you add a, would Gibson and a third for Keaton Mitchell? Like, Dude, I, I think I'd rather Gibson over Keaton Mitchell. I think if I could, if I could figure out a way to get Gibson yeah. for Keaton Mitchell, I, I, I would do yeah. that. I would do that. All right, let's go to the next guy. Uh, we got Noah Brown here. So a little less fun than Mitchell, I think in the long term, but Boy, oh boy, if if Noah Brown hasn't been outstanding the last three weeks. I mean, in the last three weeks, he's put up 382 yards. That's the second most. CD and, and Amari Cooper are the only two above him right now. He's coming into a contract year. Uh, he looks great. Uh, and he's I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's an outstanding blocker. I don't know if he'll be a Texan. Now, in those games, they were missing Robert Woods for one of them. And the, this last one and Nico. Missing Nico or yeah. missing Robert Woods for the one before and missing Nico for the last one. Um, so, you know, they've kind of been playing with an odd man out for a lot of the season here for the Texans. Usually somebody's missing. Any thoughts on, on Noah Brown? What, what are you, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Apparently I know nothing about fantasy football. <laughs> my, Nobody my, does. Uh, That's the secret. My girlfriend's brother texted me a few days ago. He goes, yeah, who do I start this week? Uh, Noah Brown or Jahan Dotson? I got to pick up one of them. I go, dude, oh. Dotson, easy. Oh. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God, dude. Jahan Dotson, I'm pretty sure, didn't have a single reception. And then Noah Brown is uh, wide receiver Slayed. six on the week, <laughs> yeah. seven for 172. And I haven't texted him back. I, I don't know if I apologize or hope he hasn't checked his team or just flee the state of New Jersey. I don't know, but yeah. like, all right, Noah Brown, apparently you're just good at football all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> No, we uh, shout out the big co scoop and plug an FFPC this week for Noah Brown. Huge. Big get, time. We get victory points in there and he was our second flex. Just fantastic. Um, Dude, receiver three, receiver six the past two weeks, 27 points, 24 points, uh, over 300 yards, 13 catches. Just like, like, dude, why do we play this game? Like nobody <laughs> has seen that coming. Like, come on. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, um, stupid. Who's, uh, Who's Matt's boy? What's it? I always forget. Riley. Riley. Riley was a Noah Brown guy. Shout out to Riley. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it, the thing is, is it's not like like it's not like oh Noah Brown like nobody was available and they just threw a bunch of balls at Noah Brown like he looks good doing it. Um, yeah. So is there is you got any value in Noah Brown? Would you trade if you could get a third for him? Would you do that or are you just holding? I think I'm holding for the third at this point. I'm gonna just let him on my team and be a little bit of a depth piece there. Uh, let me read you some third round picks or projected third round picks. And I just, I just want to run through this list real quick. Noah Brown or some guys like mm, Raheem Sanders running back out of Arkansas. Oh, what there's do you no way he's going to be a third round pick, right? Is he? he? I don't know. I don't know enough about Raheem. Anyway, I'll let you continue. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I see like AD Mitchell receiver out of Texas is going as a very late two. Mm, even like, LSU's receiver Brian Thomas Jr. or Xavier Leggett, uh, wide receiver out of South Carolina, and then all these guys are like right there. Even Will Shipley, the running back out of Clemson, mm. mm, Clemson with a P. There's a P in there. <laughs> Clemson and and don't forget he Will stinks. Moffa. Will Moffa yeah. is a force to be reckoned with. I don't just want to throw Will Moffa's name in there. This is that Moffa. Oh man, I don't know, man. I think I'd rather just roll the dice and yeah. Take- one of these, one of the best 
prospects that you can get in the third round, like best NFL draft cap. Unfortunately, I, I, I really value NFL draft cap so much. It's just kind of how the world works. And I don't agree with it. It's just I've noticed that NFL draft cap is kind of dictated a, a lot of, you know, because these guys, they, they're drafting players in the first, second, third round. Like they don't want to miss on those early picks. And they just, they're just too hard headed. Rather than playing the best player, yeah. they're going to play Plus their guy they draft early, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Seriously. you're taking Noah Brown or the third? He's, I, he's I, the third. I think I'd rather roll the dice and, t- and take uh, the third. Yeah. Hopefully, it's, it's, it's probably third. the right play to just to try to even get a little, you know, whatever you can for Noah Brown and get out. I mean, that's probably the right Sell play. Noah Brown for a third right now. <laughs> Sell Noah Brown for a first. <laughs> get as much as you can for Noah Brown, basically. Um, two first. Two Do first. It. Yep, sell him. All right. Buying. I want to uh, I want to hit a little Zona here. Uh, Kyler's back, baby. Uh, but, you know, I think there's, I still think there's some windows of, of buying here in Arizona. Um, so, Hollywood Brown has been a favorite of ours on this show. Um, the window seemingly remains open for him. Um, after four 16 point weeks in a row from week two on, he cooled off uh, with only one double digit performance in the last five games. Uh, and, and in Kyler's return, he only puts up 3.8. Uh, so, hopefully, that has some owners a little bit worried. He's in a contract year. But this outing easily could have turned into a double digit outing. Kyler missed him on one where he cooked the the, the D back and was and was kind of wide open. So this could have easily been a much better game for Hollywood. Uh, we also know that Kyler and Hollywood have chemistry going back to college. Um, and then even even last year when when Hollywood got there before getting injured in week six, Hollywood was averaging nineteen point five points per game. Was wide receiver on the six was wide receiver six on the season. It's all there, and Hollywood was playing pretty good with Dobbs for for a pretty long stretch in the beginning. Um, I think this is a really good player. I think the window is still open on Hollywood. Obviously, in a contract year, he certainly could go somewhere else. I'm not worried about that either just because I think he's a good player. So I think window still open on Hollywood Brown. Uh, send some feelers out for him. What's your, what's your thoughts on Hollywood, uh, Austin? I've always been the low man on Kyler, and I am with you here. Right, I think Kyler makes perfect sense to buy everything about the situation right and like we're looking at a quarterback that's been top 10 at the position the first three years of his career and he was gonna be last season as well for sure until you know he had his injury right so i look at kyler as like an absolute locked in top 10 fantasy option of course every single year he's probably closer to like a top seven locked in fantasy quarterback every year and that's me admittedly being low on kyler right i think that he has a ceiling that we probably haven't even seen yet, right? I think that his best days are definitely ahead of us. As a passer, I don't know about as a rusher, but as a passer, I, I know that he's definitely – like he's peaked at, what, 26 touchdown passes his second year. I know for a fact that we're going to see 30-plus touchdown passes Ooh. from him. I'm telling you, man, I, I think – I like Michael Wilson. I like, you know, Hollywood Brown is – he's got to be – the the top receiver there for the near future. I don't, I I don't necessarily, I think that they could add on to that. And Trey McBride looks good too. He looks really, really good. But uh, I I wonder if they try and add another solid wide receiver too to go along with like Michael Wilson. But I I think that Hollywood's going to be the guy for the, you know, foreseeable future. I think he loves Kyler. I think Kyler loves him. Um, I kind of think Kyler's going to stay there. How do you guys feel? Yeah, no, I I think Kyler, remains there i think he's been a buy for us all off season long those legs look spry, as spry as ever converting that huge first down uh in that game on that surgically repaired knee where he had to kind of go left he spun the opposite direction um i that just that kind of told me everything i know but and like you said while, while some uncertainty looms for kyler's future in, in arizona um and that you know you combine that with him being in a new system and 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 possibly a little bit of up and down here. I, I, I still think there's a buy window for Kyler. Um, you know, I, I think he stays in Arizona. I think they win a couple of games here, take themselves out of uh, contention for Caleb, for, for Caleb and, and put some things to rest. And, and, you know, maybe it's, maybe they back themselves up to the number three pick or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look like the Texans, they have the Texans pick, right? Uh, that's who they traded with to get Will Anderson. Uh, yeah, and that ain't looking and too that's not, good. That's man. not going to give him, you know, a top pick either. So I, you know, I think Kyler sticks around in Arizona. I love the culture that they're building there in Arizona. Everybody liked to make fun of Gannon when he was getting there. Everybody also liked to make fun of Dan Campbell when he was getting there. 
And I think those guys are 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 two similarly got built guys, and the culture is completely different. I don't think Kyler was enjoying Cliff Kingsbury, um, and I think the way they're moving and what they're doing and what they're building, I think is all heading in the right direction. I think this is going to, you know, just seeing Kyler out there doing what it takes to get the win in his first thing and his first game back here, I think, was huge for them. Um, I, I feel like Kyler seems like he might be a little more happy in this situation. He worked really hard to get back here. Um, you know, while well, well, work ethic was maybe a concern for some people with Kyler, um, I think he just didn't like the situation that he was in. So I think Kyler stays around. I think the 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 opening is 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 still open for maybe a little bit of a buy window here. He was, like I said, a buy for all off season. I think I would send a first for Kyler. Anything that's you know, super flex first. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, um, yeah. Um, you know, I, like obviously, a, like if you're, a mid, like a mid first, right? Obviously, if you're in the top couple picks, then sh you know, is, hold on to that bitch. You should probably hold on to that bitch. But for the most part, other than that, I'm, I'm down with Kyler. Kyler's just perennially been inside the top ten, eight, five uh, quarterbacks when when he plays. Um, and and those, like I said, the legs would be concerning for me to that they would be back and and first game back, he literally puts the team on his back on a third and long and runs basically like 30 yards in a circle and picks up the first down, and then the next play throws a bomb to Trey McBride to basically wrap that game up and, you know, co coincidentally really help everybody in the fantasy space by saying F you to Arthur Smith uh, for one more game. So all great things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Kyler has been a huge buy for us since the offseason, uh, knowing that he was going to miss some time, knowing that he was seeing where he was getting pushed down and all this offseason ADP and mocks that we were doing. <laughs> Uh, with the pleasure chesters over at patreon.com slash FF Dynasty. And then Marquise Brown, also a huge buy candidate for us all offseason. Perfect time to hit him again right now with that 3.8, whatever he had uh, last Hollywood. week, where, 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 you know, didn't didn't score much and coming off two, two bad weeks. Right. And really four out of the last five have been not great. So right. the value coming down, but that team up and Marquise is – he is in a contract year, so I don't know. I, there is some uncertainty with both him and uh, Kyler. I think right. best case scenario for both of them is they both stay That's why in I still, Arizona. Yeah, I still but think even if either of them leave, like it right. doesn't I'm matter. I'm still fine. Right, right, same, same, same. Yeah. Um, how about um, would you swap? I, I would. Here, here's some guys I would swap. I would swap if I could still change out Kyler for Tua. I would. Would you? Would you ha rather have Ky Kyler or Tua? I would rather Kyler. I feel yeah. good about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll you too? take that. Yeah, oh, for sure. Give me Kyler. I think I'll take Tua. Mm. See, I'll do the even swap on that. And then, you know, golf would be another one if I could finagle my way into, you know, Kyler, into Kyler, Kyler from, golf. from golf. Maybe I have to add a two to that to, to get that going. But these were some even swaps that I thought I could send and then add the two and see if I could get. And then Purdy being another one. We just did a 2024 draft and Purdy was like a fourth or fifth round pick. We'll have that video dropping soon. Um, but if I could add a two to something like that, because as somebody that is uneasy with Kyler coming off an injury or uncertain, those are things that I would do. Any any thoughts on those? You said Goff and a two for Kyler. Is, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, I would I would do that. Yeah, I would prefer Kyler there. I like that. Um, and then some guys that I might add a first with with Kyler would be, um, you know, maybe a, a Stafford, a, a Christian Kurt, or a uh, um. Kirk Cousins, who's hurt right now, maybe maybe add a first to go to Cousins. Jordan Love, Russ, Gino. If I could add a first to any of those guys and move up to Cousins, those are kind of offers that I'd be sending out there. I don't know if that'll happen, but like I could at least get a conversation started to see what else I'd have to do. Um, yeah. Anything that you're you would, not feeling there? I think you would just have to add on. Like I don't necessarily think that's far off, but I don't think it's realistic where like G Gino and a first. Right. I don't. Yeah, I don't probably think not, that. But Right. Maybe sometime last season when Gino was like peaking, right? Sure. I think then th there was a um, – I think that actually would have gotten it done. But now maybe you have to throw in like, I don't know, an extra early second. And even then, I'd probably still do it, dude. Like I said, Kyler Ky – everything we said about Kyler today, one thing we haven't even mentioned, he's 26 years old, yeah. right? Like he right. could be in the NFL for 10 more years, no problem. Right. Right? Yeah, even no, with I his agree. play style, he could be here 10 years. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah. I know – I know he's smaller, but dude, like he's, he's, he's going to be around for a while. Like his talent is, is absolutely there. Right. Uh, and we'll hit one more thing. Actually, we're going to hit two more things, but it won't be in, in, in order here. Um, 
Mick on the Cardinals. McBride, baby, let's go. Also been a big was a buy target for us all off season. Uh, heading in last week, he was on this list. Maybe you could buy him because he had a bad week. Uh, but I said Kyler was, you know, maybe coming in and nobody would want to sell him. Well, uh, he came in uh, nine targets, eight receptions, 131 yards, including the game sealer. Uh, 29% target share in week 10. He's had a 32% target share since Ertz went down and a 22% targets per route run. Uh, so McBride is just out there absolutely kicking wieners. Um, we talked about it last week as McBride as an option um, for maybe like somebody who Dallas Goddard went down. It, this week coming into it after McBride doing what he did, you know, would you, if you're, if you had Goddard on a competing team in tight end premium, you take Tyler, you take Goddard and and try to send him to the, let's say the McBride owner isn't a competitor. Could I, could I see if I could still swap out maybe Goddard for McBride? Would you do that, Austin? Oh, yeah. I'd be, I'd Has be McBride crossed into Goddard territory for you. Yeah. I think he's absolutely, he's got to be in the same tier by now, yeah. man. Just, yeah. just not only because of him practically putting up 100 plus yards in, through the past three weeks but the fact that he's you know got good size he's 23 years old he was a prospect that we all loved out of colorado is that right yeah, colorado colorado think, state yeah, yeah or sorry colorado state right um yeah man i, I think he's got to be in the same tier at the very least i don't know if they would be able to if they'd be willing to do that man recency bias really gets to people oh, a sure. lot and it's 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 annoying <laughs> more so right. than he should in dynasty you're absolutely yeah, right yeah 100 percent, dude we basically play redraft right, right in season it's three we talk about that all the time um one more before we get out from um mcbride here and maybe you got to do uh, add a little s- couple of ancillary pieces there to get the mcbride for goddard swap if you're a competitor but just something i want to talk about for teams who were competing who had maybe had dallas goddard go down for a little while um laporta or mcbride it's got to be laporta and I, I love again really really getting high on mcbride but laporta is just Man, I he's been way too good. I mean, wasn't he on pace for close to ninety receptions? I think he's on pace to break the all-time uh, receptions for a rookie uh, tight end. I know Mike Dick has got like the most receiving yards oh, at like that will be Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. No, no, no. Mike Dick, has, Mike Dick has got it right. He broke Dick his record. His no. Record. Somebody check it out right now. I swear Dicka has like a thousand seventy six. Am I a psycho? It I might Somebody be fact check me right now. Game with Pitts? Maybe maybe the maybe there's an Asterix. I don't know, but uh regardless, um I, I would prefer Laporta still. Um I, I dude, talk about talk about the landscape changing though for for dynasty tight ends, man, all of a sudden with Brock Bowers, Laporta, I love Michael Mayer, mm. uh, McBride. I mean, we got a lot oh, of good young right. tight ends, man. It went from a positional of scarcity to like we're 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 excited and and you know I'm I'm excited about it. I'm going recency bias. McBride's been my guy. I like the volume. I think it's going to stay around. I'll go. I'll put. I'll 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 swap if I could get something extra to swap McBride and Laporta. I'll, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. So Kyle Pitts had 50 yes, less receiving yards than Mike Dicka. 50 less receiving yards. Oh, okay. 1961, baby. I was around. <laughs> I was yeah, around. I, watched, I watched that whole season. He was pretty good. Yeah, decent. Decent. <laughs> Ditka. Um, two quick uh, contender notes here, things that I would do as a, as a contender for a little bit more rich. Uh, Josh Jacobs was on the show last week. As I, I would I would ship out a first for Josh Jacobs if I'm a contender. Yeah. Um, and if I'm a, if I want a little bit cheaper contender option, I gave you Derrick Henry last week, which didn't wouldn't have worked out for you this week. But I think even more so, go by Derrick Henry. I'm less scared of that offense. So if, if you're a contender for a second, James Conner in the uh, you know see if you can grab James Conner for a second. Didn't blow it up this week back, but everything looking up and up for the Cardinals offense, kind of moving forward here with Kyler back. Get James Conner. You might get could get James Conner for a second or a second and a third or something uh, moving forward for a contender because we're getting into championship hunting season and James Conner could be a piece uh, where he could really help you out. You disagree with either one of those? No, I love the Josh Jacobs take, man. Yeah. Like nobody, if he's 25 years old. People are probably starting to bug out about his age, but it's like, dude, Josh he's Jacobs is, is maybe the safest running back in the world. I swear to God, that dude is, is the epitome of safe. If you looked up the dictionary, like, man, he's, <laughs> People were bugging about, you know, his slow start this year. And sure, his, like, yards per carry are down. Dude, I don't care at all. No. He's getting fed. He's getting so much volume. volume. Exactly. Yeah. Volume, Yeah, baby. he's getting so much volume. He's getting so many targets. I think he's got 30 receptions already, man. He's probably going to crack 50. And he's, 
you remember how bad he started the season and yeah. now well, we're he missed, half- he missed the off season so yeah right right and now we're halfway through the year and he's already like rb4 i remember i drafted him in the fifth round of a few of my big leagues and i was just or one of them rather and i was just like I felt like it was the best value in the entire draft. I was ecstatic. So I, I'm all in on Josh Jacobs still, man. And I know he's on a one-year deal. We don't know where he'll be in the future. But I, I, it's fine with me. Like, I'm, I'm actually – he's one of the few running backs that I don't even care about where he lands because I believe in the player that much, man. He's, he's just – he's an awesome running back. Yeah, I agree. Um, so first for him, second for, for Connor. See where that gets you. Um, and then – a couple more little housekeeping items before we get out of here. Um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to hit a little Deshaun Watson, and I you know which you know got, got a lot of problems with you people. Uh, kind of I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> um, I saw Brett Coleman, who very much respect dudes. Dudes, a stud knows a ton more about football than I ever will. Uh, but just some some bad tweets here from from some big <laughs> from some big accounts josh dobbs jacoby Brissett, case keenum baker mayfield all of warren brown's uniforms in the last three years could very easily argue cleveland would have been much better off with literally any of them like at what point do you give dtr a shot uh they wish they so did. You don't look complacent wasting an all-time defense now that tweet sounds like it's three or four weeks old but it's that's not. a day old i think that like, was that, that was, was during during the game. the game must have been right after that pick six <laughs> sam monson from pff which he's got a lot of bad tweets kind of seems like a jo um but <laughs> you know big account doing his thing and i'm not hating on him i'm sure he puts in a lot of good work i'm sure he does his thing not totally, my cup of tea totally not hating on um him. not my cup of tea <laughs> like i don't i won't ever hate anybody for putting for the work that they i know how much work these guys are putting in and that's that's you know they, you know i whatever um the browns <laughs> traded three first round picks a third a fourth for deshaun watson and gave him 230 million dollars guaranteed and at the moment it, it's not immediately clear he's any better than josh dobbs who was traded away for a fifth round pick well, let's start with that one Right. Don't hate the tweet or hate the tweet. So for the for the right, uh, let's just go ahead and start off. There isn't a person walking planet fucking Earth that thought Josh Dobbs was worth anything uh, at the beginning of this season. So let's just start there. And we've we're a Josh Dobbs loving podcast at this point. I'm a Vikings might be my number two team. I'm rooting for right now because I love Josh Dobbs. Uh, it's so much fun. I, he deserves a shot. He should be good. But let's not pretend like anybody gave a shit or thought Josh Dobbs could play at all. Coming into this season. Uh, terrible tweet there. And then going back to Brett's tweet there, like they gave DTR a shot. He was terrible. The, they, right. Did you not see DTR shot? That he and, got? and he should maybe he might be good. I, I I like DTR in the off season. I like DTR in the preseason. They he went back good. to PJ Walker after right. they went DTR. PJ like, Walker, on. they he beat the Niners. And that was an anomaly. That defense is great. It was a, it was a mucky game. The Niners could have won on a field goal at the end of the end yeah, of that. The kicker but beat the Niners. Two weeks later, PJ Walker was horrible. They don't have a better option. In my entire life, the Browns have never had a starting quarterback that was worth it a shit at all. We've seen the jersey a million times. I'm not here defending Deshaun Watson at all, the human being. But if Deshaun Watson is 50, 70% of what he was at Houston in the beginning of his career, he's the best quarterback I've ever seen on the Cleveland Browns. And this game right here in the second half is the reason that you brought Deshaun Watson in so you could win close Divisional battles where you had to actually battle to win that game. And Deshaun Watson did it. I believe he was a perfect 14 for 14 at mm-hmm. one point in that second half, if not the whole second half. It's just asinine that people come out here and are so upset that the Cleveland Browns ownership went out and tried to make the quarterback position a non-issue for them when they've yeah. had nothing but struggles there when their if, entire if they, life. If they would have stuck with the guys in Brett Coleman's tweet that he was saying, they, they, everyone would be and mad at them for sticking so with those guys. mad. So mad. Like, what are you doing? Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett is not a franchise quarterback. He can come in and win you some games in a pinch here and there. He's fine. Like, People you know. People get ahead of themselves and want to be so smart. And Baker's so cool. playing great. But, I mean, Baker's time seemingly had run out in 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 – in Cleveland, man, like, mm-hmm. I just I think people just lose sight of things so fast. Like you guys have been so bad for so long and you like the Browns, not the tweeters. Right. And <laughs> again, I like I think Brett's awesome and I don't know anything about Sam. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Um, it's no disrespect to those guys, but I think that those were just stupid tweets. And it's just like, man, 
Like Deshaun Watson, I get it. He's easy to hate right now. And there's a, you know, there, there's a lot of luggage and baggage that comes along with him. And they gave him a lot of money and they gave away picks, yada, yada, yada. But I mean, if he can come out here and be healthy and just do what he just did, the Browns are going to win a lot of football games, man. He's going to get him into the playoffs. That's what you want. I mean, Jesus, man, like there's not a whole lot of quarterbacks out there that come available in free agency. And they, they went out and, 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 and did what a lot of people wouldn't have the courage to do. Give them a, give up a bunch of picks and give up a bunch of money. Well, a lot of people tried to do it. There was, there was three or four teams in the running. They just upped it by like 30 million guaranteed right. to the point where no other owner was like, wow, we can't do that. That's unprecedented. So, I, and now all the quarterbacks want that deal and none of them are getting it. Right. None of them got it. Right. That was like, Deshaun and, and Watson became yeah, may, available. And maybe that is a bad deal. And the, as far as money wise, but again, like, dude, you guys haven't had a quarterback. Like, everybody's seen the Jersey with 30 fucking quarterbacks on it, man. Yeah. Like you haven't had a quarterback. I don't need Deshaun Watson to be as great as he ever was. I just need Deshaun Watson to do what he just did. Furthermore, he got rolled up on, and that ankle went sideways early in that game, and my man toughed it out. Can we drop the narrative that he's quitting on this team? That was all you heard from can we drop that whatever week that week three until the last week that he's hurt. He was he's just he's he's quitting on the team. He's such a piece of shit. He's not injured. He just just doesn't want to, he just doesn't care. It's like he fucking cares. Like he's he's Trying to shake off whatever the hell demons he's got in his closet. He and played, maybe he's the worst human being walking planet Earth. I don't know. This has nothing to do with that. With, it has nothing as to do with As far as what I'm talking about. And, and I'm what, talking about strictly football right, at this point. Right. I, I watched this man at Clemson play against South Carolina on a torn ACL. He delayed surgery on a torn ACL so that he could go out and beat South Carolina, which he did. And then he like immediately had surgery afterwards. And I felt bad as a program. Like, why are we doing this to Deshaun? Why are we even letting him play on this? But he did it. I don't like, even like Clemson, so I'm not even a Clemson fan. So that's you know, I went to Clemson. Uh, he so went I to Clemson, Clemson. So I just had to put that out there. I can yeah. give a shit less about Clemson. Well, I haven't been championing the Deshaun Watson talk either. I, I'm yeah. kind of piggyback off of you, but like I'm I'm all for it. I just think it's silly, man. I just really do. I, listen, yeah, you want to be mad at him as a person. You sure. want to matter what he allegedly sure. has done. That's fine. I'm not going to argue with you that, about that, but I will argue that that he's not quitting on his team and that he is good for fantasy football and the football world doesn't care about your off the field track record if you start winning games they just don't care right so uh, once that Joe starts Mixon. happening see Randy Joe Gregory Mixon. see fucking Kamara J- see just Kareem Hunt <laughs> like the list goes on and on and on if Ray Rice was any good at football he probably would have been back in the league he was averaging less than like three yards of carry when he got like and and I'm not saying any of that shit is right it's obviously not necessarily right Tyree Kill this is know, all about know. Tyree Kill which that was kind of like <laughs> there's that's a lot of allegedly there and he kind of got completely cleared but like look what He's had right. to endure. I'm sure there's a lot of allegedly that we don't even know about with a bunch of players. And 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 if that was what was going to get them out of the league, then you'd have to stop. But the fact of the matter is, is that they don't care. This is about money and winning football games. And that's what Deshaun Watson does for the Cleveland Browns. Like, right. He's winning them football games and he's scoring you fantasy points. So right, any any yeah, has he necessarily done that? I think this is the first time that you saw it. This that that for me that it was like, all right, this is what you paid him for, and that's all I wanted to come in in here and say. And I just it seems it seems crazy that that everybody's so upset about what they paid him and what they did, and it was like they they kudos to them for you know just like the Niners for trading three first round picks and everybody wants to. Fl- I'm never gonna hate on somebody for trying to make shit better and 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 shoot their shot. Is, is is and it seems like you know Deshaun Watson hadn't played in two years. He came out. He was you know Rusty. battling demons the last, rightfully so. He deserves maybe everything that that's going on personally or whatever and whatever personal personal shit he's battling in his head. But you know football wise, he's been okay through these couple of games, a little clunky, and then this last game he battled against an awesome defense and an awesome division rival and won you the damn game. So anyway. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to expand on that. I don't expect you to have anything to expand on that. Um, uh, I guess I'll just say a few things real quick. Like, dude, I'm 27 years old. The Browns have not had a relevant quarterback in my lifetime. Maybe you want to call Baker Mayfield that. Like, them winning that one playoff game under Baker was the furthest that they've gone in my life, right? That's literally been their Super Bowl. And, like, Baker ended up being out of town uh, within two years of that day. And, 
So I like their thought process of saying, you know what, screw it, man, forget the money, forget the draft picks. We're going to go all in. We are, this is our win now window. We're going to go get a top tier quarterback into Sean Watson. And I know he has not played like that in you know the past, whatever, two years, but I, I, I like their thought process. I like where their heads at. I like what you guys said that they're like, man, you know what, we, we need to stop just hanging around we we have to take that next step forward and try and really go from just pretender to a true contender and like right now we're looking at the browns at the six seed right now in the nfl playoff picture they are the six seed they're six and three they're third in the afc north an extremely tough division and they didn't and, even have their quarterback for four of those games yeah yeah and and that's the thing man like i don't question his durability for a second i know that watson you know his rookie year right he went down but after his rookie year in 2017 he played all of 2018 uh all of 2019 2020 and then 2021 of course he was suspended and then last year he played in all the games that he was eligible and and this year yes he's been banged up but i think it's going to be a few more weeks once he's 100 percent right and maybe it's just as early as next week man um but once his body's right man like cleveland could be a very very scary team down the stretch yeah. they're i mean dude miles garrett alone he should be a top 10 mvp uh, candidate right that that dude right. is a specimen and i just want to give him a shout out because he is the leader of that cleveland defensive unit that is so so special yeah no, I agree. And I mean, and, and and years beyond if Deshaun Watson can, like I said, I don't need him to be the guy he was in Houston throwing for 5,000, 4,000 yards and a bunch of touchdowns. I just need him to be a fairly competent quarterback. And it's better than anything they've ever had. And they might have to, just like the Jaguars had to overpay for Christian Kirk. The Browns had to overpay right, to get a quarterback who could be functional. To, nobody wants to go to Cleveland. He didn't want to go to Cleveland. He got the same $200 million offer that he got from all the other teams and said no to Cleveland. They were like, what about 230? Who was the? Uh, and he was like, okay. Who was the dude from Chicago who was always hating on Cleveland? Uh, Noah from Florida. Jakeem Noah, the basketball player. He's always fucking crushing right. Cleveland. <laughs> Jakeem Noah has yeah. like a voice. He was crushing Cleveland back in the day. I don't think people realize how high his upside is either. Like back in 2020, Deshaun Watson, he, dude, people will really forget this. Like he led the NFL in passing yards with yeah. like almost almost 5,000 passing yards, man. Like he is that good of a passer. And of right. course he can do Not a lot of damage on the, on the ground. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly, man. He's just, he's got that upside. I know, I know we haven't seen it in a minute, but it's definitely still there. And and hey, man, like things take a while to, you know, it takes a while to gel. You don't necessarily mesh the second you land in a new city or the first year. You Especially know? when um, you're dealing with some of the shit that he did. And again, rightfully so, I'm not absolving him of anything. I'm just. Right. Yeah. And, and you <laughs> meant Joe Kim Noah was crushing Cleveland because he played there. He wasn't just talking shit on like a podcast just, or. Just because Cleveland sucks. This so is much. a while ago. Yeah. Man, y'all remember Nobody Joe Kim Noah? There. Jesus. I mean, Florida won like back to back nannies uh, with that guy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Two more things before we get out of here. Quentin Johnston, maybe a little bit brighter days ahead. Uh, did I was in the Discord before he caught the touchdown, and I was like, oh, man, seems like it's boiling at the surface. There could be a little breakout of QJ coming in the next couple of weeks. He did catch a touchdown in this last one, but um, two pass interference, or maybe one of them was defensive holding and one of them was pass interference where, you know, he, got, he had to be interfered with because he made the D-back defender, um, you know, miss or miss his assignment or blow it so he was about to get open and on one of them herbert put a very good ball while he was getting hold the guy grabbed his his uh his waist and kind of turned him a little bit quentin still should have caught it um but you know those signs that that he can uh get open and make plays is 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 something promising so maybe a little bit Brighter days on uh, on Quentin Johnson and, and and coming off that Jets game where he saw a lot of sauce on the outside because sauce wasn't going into the slot, right. I believe. And then you know we've we've heard a lot of Najee Warren stuff. It seems like all the big accounts were were you know for a while there tweeting. Warren's like it's them. been it's been five games since uh, Warren has outscored Najee, and then you didn't hear that for a while because he didn't. And then I think this last game he may have, um, but. Dude, sometimes it's just okay for two guys to be able to work well together. And right. Then, like, I don't think look at I, I don't think Jalen Warren is a one carrying the load for any team. I think he's great in the role that he has right now. Um, I, I think what they have together, I think is awesome. It's okay to be have two good things. I think 
I think Najee does one thing, Warren does another. I think it's kind of what the identity of their team is right now. Uh, again, we've seen it time and time again where, uh, you know, you want you want the other the other flashy guy to 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 be the RB one, and then when that happens, it doesn't quite work out. I mean, we're 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 looking at that with Pollard right now, uh, who who was the poster child for this. Um, I just I just think sometimes duos are best served together uh, rather than I know everybody just sees the big play from Warren. They don't talk about all the, the, the other plays that happen from Warren when nothing happens. Um, and, and Najee goes out there and pounds for a couple. Um, I'm so curious. I, I think those guys are, 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 are good together, man. It's okay for two things to kind of work together. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think Warren is, is a one all by himself. Do you disagree, Austin? He's got the BMI five eight two fifteen, and he's putting up the production. Do you think he could be a one, or what? It, what, what do you? What are your thoughts on this? I can't talk about this because I'm going to get in trouble. I am, <laughs> I am the biggest Najee fan ever, and like I know I've kind of looked like an idiot this year, uh, and I kind of want to apologize to Jalen Warren. I I dislike him solely because of like. The, dynasty twitter mm. hating Najee harris and right. worshiping right. him and it's made me dislike jalen warren so jalen if i ever run into you in public like you're probably a good dude and i and like i just want to say you know like yeah well, sorry that's, that's, for, that's for the, the unnecessary hate but like yeah, right. it's because the dynasty community is right. just like all oh, dude it drives it's always me what is it it always what isn't the thing it's always yeah. got to be the, the thing behind the thing of course we want that thing and it's like Look, I think if that thing became the thing, I don't. I don't think it would be all yeah. that much different than it is right now. Um, it's so it I, I think that's, crazy. Sometimes you got to be be careful uh, what you wish for, and it's not like I've always. Even when I we've been Najee guys, it's never been a slight on Warren. I think Warren's a good player. Like, right, that's, that's not, always the caveat. Like right, the big guys it, when they talk about a, Deshaun, allegedly, the caveat is this isn't a slight at Jalen Warren. Right, and that's the, I think no, the same thing yeah. that you just said. It's it's that it just drives me insane that it's just it's it's so much. It's got. Why are we even playing Najee here? It's like because he fuck because he does what he does, and yeah. Najee's actually been pretty good the last like yeah. four or five. Which weeks. is why you haven't heard a ton of right. buzz about how great that Jalen Warren has also been, right? Because right. I mean, you look up and he he's flashing up there. I, th you know? I like, think they're a great. I think that's I think that's the Steelers' identity right now, Warren and Najee. I mean, so you know what's an interesting point though? Like you look at Alexander Madison, he finally gets a chance, and like all of a sudden people are kind of disappointed. They wanted this for years, and now they're disappointed. And then you look at like Tony Pollard like Zeke's out of town and again it's like they're kind of disappointed yeah, so like imagine if it's always the Warren, guy behind the other guy yeah yes imagine if Warren got the chance and it's like maybe he's kind of disappointing you know maybe these teams actually maybe the coaches and GMs actually know what they're doing and they have that one-two punch for a reason like you look at dude look at Detroit like right everything looks fantastic with their two running backs right, right. maybe that's the best case scenario maybe 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 just maybe Let's end on that unless you have anything else you want to add to this podcast. No, man. Let's get let's get the FF out of here. Uh, well done, sir. Uh, make sure you follow Austin at Austin Abbott FF. Two Bs, two Ts. Uh, two Fs. Go, go, uh, go follow our guy. Appreciate you, man. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five-star review on the podcast. $5 holler for the Discord. Uh, for the Patreons, rather. You get on the Discord. You get three extra shows uh, a month. Uh, we got all sorts of shows coming out. We got a 2024 way too early uh, mock draft startup coming out. And then right after that one, we'll have one with rookies. Uh, duh. And then uh, all, all sorts of rebuild content. We got all sorts of we're, we're going to keep doing rankings, cornerstones, all this stuff for your pleasure. You'll be seeing some more Austin hanging out with the FFD guys. Um, so. Extra shows over on the patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Join these mocks with us. Get in on this. We'll, as soon as you know, the season creeps towards the end, we'll start ramping up ADP and developing that for the offseason and getting right into rookie season. And it never stops here. Dynasty season never stops. The beat goes stop. Head over to revelrybrewingco.com slash the FF Dynasty for a t-shirt. Support your boys. Go rock that fresh fitted tea. Strong tea. Yeah. I think that's all we got. Yeah. Let's get like a guy else to the FFF out of here and we'll catch you next time. Peace.